While teams in the Western Conference got better this offseason, in my opinion, like the Timberwolves, the Thunder, and the Mavericks, the other tier one team I have in the Denver Nuggets kind of got worse. Their important 3D veteran KCP ended up signing a three-year deal with the Orlando Magic, and the Nuggets' first round pick in Deron Holmes suffered an Achilles tear in summer league and is out all of the 2025 season. But they did just pick up Russell Westbrook from the LA Clippers, so let's do a new look Nuggets rebuild with Russell Westbrook. So what is going on everybody? How is everybody doing today? Yeah, they picked up Russell Westbrook, who's going to be going into basically his 18th year in the NBA. And Russ at this point of his career is someone that can give you some energy, some momentum, and some life off the second unit. I'm actually excited to see what him and Jokic could do in the pick and roll with Russ as a driver. There could be some fun dribble handoffs. And I do think he's an upgrade over Reggie Jackson in limited minutes. And Jamal Murray, who does get injured a little bit, is their starting point guard. But that's where Russ can come in off the bench. They did pick up Dara Sarge this offseason, which is nice. They are expecting for Christian Brown to replace KCP, which is a big ass, but he's going into year number three. He obviously contributed to their 2023 championship team. They expect maybe Peyton Watson to take a jump. I'm really high on Julian Strother as well. And I like some of their second round picks in Trey Alexander and PJ Hall. Now for this rebuild, we're going to attempt with injuries on, stepping roll on, all the trade restrictions on. So we're going to see if this rebuild is going to drive me insane or not. 45 progression rate, 55 regression rate. And like I said, injuries will be on. So this is going to be a tough ass today. Now I do wonder, do I have to break up this core for eventually? or could I win another title with Murray, Porter Jr., Gordon, and Jokic? Obviously, I don't want to move Nikola Jokic. He's not going anywhere. If I had to choose between Murray, Porter Jr., or Gordon, probably like to choose Murray the most, but then I guess it comes down between Porter Jr. and Gordon. There's no second apron in this game, but that would provide maybe another wrinkle. They're going to need Zeke Naji to step up with Deron Holmes being out for the year. And obviously, I'd like to get a ring with Russell Westbrook as well at one point, even if he's like the last guy off the bench. And if Russ can realize that he's not a three-point shooter, he could be a very effective guy in the second unit. He was like that at times for the Clippers last year. So this is what the lineup is going to look like. Murray, Brown, Porter Jr., Gordon, and Jokic with Peyton Watson, Julian Strother, Russ, Saric, and Zeke Naji off the bench. We will not be playing Deron Holmes this year since he's out for the season. We're four-star pace and space under Mike Malone. We'll see how this team performs. To start off the year, we ended up losing by six to the LA Lakers. Okay, not a great start. When is our first win going to be? Is it going to be against Memphis? Yes, it is. We end up blowing them out. Jokic with a 37-point, almost triple-double. Murray at 14 assist. Michael Porter Jr., even though he shot two for nine from three, finished with 22 points. All right, no KCP, no problem. This team is 39 and 12 this season. That's kind of insane. Jokic is averaging a 26-point triple-double, well on his way to getting his fourth MVP of his career. Jamal Murray has been fantastic, and we haven't had any injuries as well, knock on wood, like, which has been phenomenal. Michael Porter Jr., 16 points, five rebounds a night. Aaron Gordon, 15 points, seven rebounds a night. His efficiency is off the charts. Okay, this team is being very, very cohesive said together, which is nice. Dario Sarge has been a nice veteran off the bench. There's Russell Westbrook doing great in a limited role, giving me four rebounds and four assists a night. I don't think I'm going to make any changes. I wish Julian Strother was a little bit more efficient. I thought I was going to have to make some type of move this offseason, which, or this season, which could come in the offseason. Let's re-sign Aaron Gordon as well, so we don't have to worry about that $21 million a year. And maybe we're just going to get like that 2023 Sacramento Kings injury luck season where nobody's going to get hurt. Now, I'm sure somebody's going to get hurt towards the second half of the year. I mean, I have no idea if I could sign them, but they're they're out here. What about Markel Fultz? Uh, I can't sign them. I mean, I don't know if I would release anybody right now to try to sign those guys. I mean, Pickett, Tyson, Vlaco, I guess I would release because I don't even think he would ever make my rotation even if there was injuries that happened like if I tried to sign faults yeah I can't afford him what about Kennard would you want five okay I can sign Luke Kennard can I give him a two-year deal let's do that I don't think he's gonna play but if we need some shooting he could come in handy if an injury does occur immediately after I say that Julian Strother hyper extends his left shoulder four to six weeks he could play through it though oh you gotta be kidding me so your coach wins MVP you're like Matt you should be excited right well he just got hurt he's gonna be out two to four weeks I think it is oh my Oh, which is brutal. I mean, maybe he comes back quicker. Who knows? But yeah, dislocated his right shoulder. He can't play through it. Two to four weeks. So he may be all... Like, he's going to be out all round one, which is kind of brutal for us right now. I guess I'm going to go like Dario Sarge at the five. I don't want to play DeAndre Jordan. Maybe it's going to be Zeke Naji. Yeah, that is just brutal to see on the last day of the season. Can't even be excited about his like unreal stat line to win his fourth MVP award. We are the one seed. We're taking on the New Orleans Pelicans in round number one. They are starting Daniel Tice over Yid Misi, um, but they didn't move Brandon Ingram. That's a good team on paper. And like Murray was great this year. Porter Jr. was great. Aaron Gordon was great. Luke Kennard, I mean, played when Michael Porter Jr. got hurt. He was fine. Actually averaged a decent amount of assists. But yeah, like Christian Brown, I think it's fine for us. I mean, maybe I'm going to go Dario Sarge at the five, which I don't know. I guess this is an okay series for Jokic to be hurt because they don't really have a true scary center in New Orleans. How did DeAndre Jordan... Oh, he didn't even play a single game. Okay, so I think... 
I guess we'll go Najee. I don't know. Do I rather have Najee or would I rather have Sarich? And they're at the five spot. Let's go Najee. Let's see if he can step up in this moment. We'll stick with the nine-man rotation. We're going to play Sarge a decent amount more. Strother, unfortunately, was kind of inefficient this year. He may get like 10 minutes a night in the playoffs. I may not even play him. Like, you know what? I think I'm actually going to be more inclined to play Luke Kennard just because I know I'm going to get more consistent shooting. I think Najee we can go like 26 minutes a night too. And yeah, we're going to rely a ton on the big three currently with no uh, Jokic out there in Michael Porter Jr., Jamal Murray, and Aaron Gordon. Can we beat the Pelicans? Let's find out. Game number one goes to the Denver Nuggets. No Jokic, no problem. We win by six, 119-113. Boom, there we go. 28 for Murray, 23 for Gordon, 17 for Russ, 15, 15, and three for Michael Porter Jr., even though he had a terrible shooting game. Game number two goes to the Denver Nuggets. We end up winning by seven, 24 and nine for Porter Jr., 22, five and seven for Murray, 18, four and seven for Aaron Gordon. Game number three, no Jokic. No problem. We win by 17. That is massive for us. The big three showing up right there. And are we going to sweep them? No, we do not. But we do have the gentleman's sweep lined up as we're getting playoff Jamal Murray, as we all expect. Game number five. Boom. There we go. We gentlemen sweep the Pelicans with no Jokic. Zeke Naji kind of stepped up in this series. Like I said, though, that was the series where we were probably most comfortable being without Jokic. I mean, Zubats is probably going to dominate against us, but once again, it's not another scary big man team. Damn, Fred Van Vliet ended up getting traded to Chicago. He ruptured his Achilles. Kuzma got hurt. Sadiq Bey got hurt. Well, I guess Sadiq Bey may have been just coming back from that original injury. What is the timeline for Jokic to come back? He's got one to two more weeks, so he's probably going to miss this whole series against the Clippers. We take a game one victory, though, by 27. Murray drops 40. He's averaging 32 in the playoffs on elite efficiency. Game number two goes to the Denver Nuggets. We end up winning by 30. Murray has been a legit number one. We do end up losing game number three by 25 points. We just let Nick Batum drop 35. And there's the no Jokic issue as Zubac just had 20 rebounds. Man, Christian Brown has not been good in the playoffs though. Like, I, I don't know. Like, Peyton Watson's been fine. I don't really know. Do we want to start Russ? Not really. Luke Kennard. I may start Luke Kennard, but ah, that backcourt defense is going to be kind of brutal. Honestly, I think I'm going to experiment with it. So we're going to give Luke Kennard like 21 minutes a night. Wow, midseason pickup Luke Kennard. Game four goes to the Clippers. All right, not great. We lost by 14. Porter Jr. and Murray combined for 66 points. What's the Jokic timeline? He's day-to-day. -day. Can we get him back for game five? We cannot as we just drop game number five. Jokic, please, I need you. Can he, can he play? Can he play through it? Please, please. Oh, yes, let's go. We get Jokic back. That's huge. And Christian Brown has been so bad offensively. He's going to be out of the rotation. Even Peyton Watson's been kind of disappointing in the playoffs too. So Jokic is going to get like 39 minutes a night. Here we go. Game number six. It is our first playoff game here in 2025 with Nicole Jokic. We get off to a great offensive start. Boom, there we go. We are blowing out the LA Clippers. We're going to be going back to Denver for game seven. 143-110. Jokic did not miss a beat. 45-point triple-double in his game back. Luke Kennard hits six threes, scores 22 points. Points as the Thunder just beat the Lakers in seven games on the other side of the Western Conference bracket. Here we go. Game number seven against the Clippers. No Paul George for them, obviously, in this season as we are currently up by three points in the fourth quarter. It's going to be a close one. We're down by one, up by one. Oh, up by four. I'm going to win this game. I'm confident in my ability. Unfortunately, Murray is getting tired. Let's find Aaron Gordon in this pick and roll. Aaron Gordon, put I hate those animations so much, man. You have a smaller defender on you. Come on. We have Jokic guarding James Harden. The triple-double merchants out here. All right, you know what? I'm fine with Luke Kennard. Not a good defender. Guarding Chris Dunn, though. That is not an intimidating offense player. This is not a good mismatch for us, though. We're here. We're here. We're here. Oh, God. Okay, Kawhi's going to hit that. I mean, that's not a match uh, matchup we want. Let's call timeout. Let's get some subs in. And for Kawhi Leonard, we're not going to have Michael Porter jr on him let's throw aaron gordon on him because then we could just throw yeah who's ever at the floor pj tucker michael porter jr can guard Jokic murray pick and roll there we go that's what i'm talking about Jokic is a 17 point triple double all right aaron gordon guarding Kawhi. this is a matchup we're actually okay with as Kawhi's gonna miss that Jokic picks up a huge rebound run the floor gordon what are you doing oh canard what are you doing oh my god you had a wide open three and he misses the wide open mid-range man come on Christian Brown with the steal. Yes, yes. That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's be smart. Gordon, run the goddamn floor. Oh my God. And PJ Tucker blocks you. I'm going to kill Aaron Gordon. Unfortunately, Michael Porter Jr. fouled out. We get a wide open Jamal Murray. Three and it's in, in and out. Come on, Jamal. Kawhi, please miss that. Thank you. All right, all right. Let's just get the ball to Jamal Murray here. We're lucky we're playing some good defense. All right, I wonder if they're going to send the double team on Jokic. Come on, Jokic. Let's get this in there, please. Jokic, fadeaway jumper. That is no good. 
Christian Brown can test on Kawhi. He hits that. It's a two-point game. Kind of hate that they have Derek Jones Jr., their best perimeter defender outside of Kawhi guarding with Kennard. Oh, I should have took that with Kennard. Kennard, I don't know why I'm trusting Kennard to do a shot right now. Oh, Jamal Murray's wide open. Um, Okay, we got Harden to pump fake. Out to Jokic. Jokic, come on. Hold on to the ball. Oh, my God. All right, I need Jokic to hit. Jesus, man. I'm going to have to take this with Jokic and he gets tripped. I am a clown. Jokic help against Kawhi. He's going to miss that. But P.J. Tucker with the rebound. And Kawhi's wide open for three. Okay, thank God he missed that. I guess if you're tired, you're not hitting threes. Because Murray missed the wide open one before. Murray, Gordon, pick and roll. Murray gets to the rim. Murray, finish. There we go. In one, Jamal Murray. That is what I'm talking about. That has a chance to put us up by five. Russ is trying to beat his former team. I didn't even mention that before. Murray... Thank you. Five-point game. All right, Gordon, I need you to clamp up on Kawhi. He pulls up for three. Okay, thank God he missed that. Get that to Jamal. That should be it. Looks like we're coming back down three to two to go to the conference finals the first time since 2023. All right, so we're going up against the Oklahoma City Thunder here in the conference finals. You have Philadelphia and Orlando over there, two teams that made massive free agency signings for their squads in the 24 offseason. Paul George to the Sixers, KCP to the Magic. Here we go. So the Thunder signed Isaiah Hardstaff, like the three biggest free agency signings are here in the conference finals and here we are without kcp strother's not even in the rotation i don't know how he got a migraine maybe too much ncaa the night before as jamal murray dropped 37 in a loss Jokic four for 12 all right game number two against okc sarge is a sore back he's day to day uh and we go down 2-0 oh my god we got outscored by 18 in overtime how does that even happen oh my god jamal murray has been so good in the playoffs here we go game number three goes to the thunder wow we just get we're getting blown out we just flat out can't beat this team i guess this was going to be our kryptonite i mean the pelicans and the clippers were kind of favorable matchups for us in the first two series and we got swept i am tired of doing western conference rebuilds man i know we got some eastern conference teams lined up funny enough though i think i'm doing the lakers next but don't worry we're gonna be doing bucks we're gonna be doing raptors we're gonna be doing magic and shake gilgis alexander's your western conference finals mvp and paulo in the east as the magic beat the sixers in six and win the nba finals man is your finals mvp Beat the Thunder in six. LeBron ends up retiring. Same with Chris Paul. No, Russ. I'm overriding it. I'm going to try to at least win one with Russ, and that would be next year as LeBron and Chris Paul head to the Hall of Fame. So I do think I'm going to make a notable move this offseason. I would like to get maybe a better offensive player off the bench. I do wonder if I would move on from Christian Brown. But what is that going to be nice is we're going to have Deron Holmes on the team next year. So I may look to move Zeke Naju, who I think recovered some of his value this year. I don't mind paying money on this team right now. And the Jazz, who picked up Royce O'Neal, are looking to get off his contract. They're going to give me the 25th overall pick in this draft. I'm going to send them Zeke Naji, Jalen Pickett, and pick 44. We're going to pay Royce O'Neal 11 million for the next three years, but I do think if there's a good trade in place, some team will take on his cap space. 11 million dollars nowadays isn't like the craziest amount, and I get two first round picks in this draft. So the Portland Trailblazers won the Cooper Flag sweepstakes, and that's who they end up taking with the number one overall pick. Cavs ended up with the second overall pick, and they end up with Ace Bailey. Minnesota at three. They get Dylan Harper. All right, the Jazz missed out on some valuable swaps. Drake Powell goes four to Toronto, and five is Nolan Troyer to the Washington Wizards. All right, so with my first first round pick, I'm going to take Noah Essengay out of France, a nice off-ball player. And I'm going to take DJ Wagner with my other first round pick. He was a top prospect going into this collegiate season. Didn't play well for Kentucky. It's going to be at, I believe, Arkansas next year. Not sure if these guys will crack the rotation next year. Maybe Noah Essengay. We'll see if I do make a trade. All right, so team player options, Sarge shops in, which I'm okay with. Watson, Brown, and Strother. We're going to pick up those team options. Maybe we're going to be a team that makes a move at the deadline if we feel like we need to do something there. I would like to bring back Russ. Hopefully, I'm able to do so financially. We do not have bird rights on him, obviously. Uh, Russ, it looks like we can't afford him. Russ wants $13 million a year. Okay, maybe the Russell Westbrook portion of this video is going to end abruptly. We'll see. I'm not going to renounce the rights on him. We are going to renounce the rights on DeAndre Jordan, though. I just don't know why they keep bringing him around. I can give Russ $7 million, hopefully on the last day of free agency he will take that and i'm gonna get priced out on uh pj hall and trey alexander it seems like wow russell westbrook actually signed a deal with the nets okay uh maybe we'll trade for russ i don't know I mean, I would have to give up Royce O'Neal to do so. Oh, but I can't trade for Ross, I think, until December because of the trade restrictions. All right, that may be a deadline thing. We'll see because we will have the Royce O'Neal contract to move. All right, so this is going to be the rotation this year. It's going to be the same starting five as last year. It's a big year for Christian Brown if he wants to be a part of our future plans. Uh, we have Peyton Watson, Deron Holmes now off the bench, Julian Strother, Dario Sarch, Noah Essengay, the rookie. So we're basically going to hold Royce O'Neal hostage to potentially move him at the deadline. And the big G League candidate is going to be DJ Wagner. Under Mike Malone, we are four and a half star pace in space. We have a road game to start off the year against the Boston Celtics. And we ended up losing 134 to 120. Jokic had a phenomenal game, but starting off the season with an L, which happened last year. We did lose our first game of the year, but we did win our second game of the year. Is that going to happen here to the Charlotte Hornets? Nope. We lost 128, 114. 
Interesting. And a brutal start to the year where Julian Strother tears his right hamstring. He's gonna be out six to eight weeks. Michael Porter Jr. pulls his lower back muscle. He's out four to six weeks. Probably gonna insert Peyton Watson into the starting five. Julian Strother is back. Oh, this is brutal. Nicole Jokic suffers a severe right ankle sprain. He's gonna be out eight to 10 weeks. Uh, we're in January, so there's a really good chance he's gonna be back before the end of the year, but we are not really performing as good as we were last year. So this is a obviously a massive blow. And we're here at the end of January. We are having our like fair share of injuries this year. We're 23 and 22. We're seeing some regression to the team. And we are here at the trade deadline with a 27 and 24 record. We're currently the eighth seed in the Western Conference. We do have a negative point to uh, dif uh, point differential. Uh, so, you know, I think we could be okay. Like this is currently without Nikola Jokic right now. Noah Essengate also suffered a severe injury of a high left ankle sprain. Like that is nothing minor. Jamal Murray has actually been our number one scorer this year. He's like falling to his prime as an offensive playmaker. Michael Porter Jr. has been kind of down this year with his efficiency, which is kind of odd. Aaron Gordon has had multiple injuries this year, but he's fighting through it right now. Christian Brown, like his efficiency has been okay. We got to figure out if we want to pay him at the end of the year. Dron Holmes has had his up and downs of his real rookie season. I want to see if they'll do Russell Westbrook for Royce O'Neal. They counter it. They would want Dario Sarge, who I'd have to give up. Who I'm okay giving up. I'm going to get Shake Milton in this deal. We're going to get Russ back on the squad. I want to win a title with him. He's in the thumbnail and video, or I should say in the title. And I think that's going to be the only move we're going to make at the deadline this year. I mean, Brown, Watson, like these are going to become more tradable contracts next deadline after I extend them. So I'm actually going to make this trade with the Toronto Raptors. We're going to get Jamal Sheed, who's got two years left and a trade exception is going to be used, and we're going to get them Luke. Kennard. And Russell Westbrook is going to suffer a high right ankle sprain. His season may be over. And Luka Doncic ends up winning MVP this season. The first of his career. Cooper Flag, the number one overall pick to Portland. Rookie of the year. Ace Bailey, sixth man of the year. Wemby Depoy. Delano Banton, most improved in Philly. Kate Cunningham, clutch player of the year. Mark Dagno, coach of the year. We actually did have a strong end to the year with Jokic fully back. We finished, I believe, 48 in 34 or something around that. Somehow, Jamal Murray does not make it to an all-NBA team. Brutto, Paolo Bancaro is going to be hurt for them in the playoffs. And Deron Holmes ends up on all rookie second team. Let's go. Oh my God, we were good enough to finish as the second seed with 50 wins. Okay, we actually went 50 and 32. Finished with the fourth best point differential, but edged out the Mavericks and the Kings for the two seed in the Western Conference behind the Thunder, which is nice. We're on the other side of the bracket than them. And yeah, Rush should be back in this first round, which is nice. He finished with 10 points, six rebounds, six assists this year. He had a nice role in Brooklyn. Jamal Sheed played a little bit with him out and he's not gonna be in the rotation in the playoffs, but actually we did all right. And in the G League, DJ Wagner suffered a dislocated right patella. I don't know if I've ever seen an injury in the G League before. All right, so this is going to be the playoff rotation. It's going to be the same starting five with a four-man bench of Peyton Watson, Russell Westbrook, Julian Strother, and Deron Holmes. Four and a half star pace in space, and we're going to be taking on the Houston Rockets in round number one. This Rockets team, obviously led by a lot of young pieces. They do have Zach Levine on their team right now and Lonzo Ball as well. Uh, that was in the Fred Van Vliet deal. Game one goes to Denver, though. Jokic with a 30-point triple-double. Aaron Gordon had a double-double. Game two goes to Denver. We end up winning by 30. Porter Jr., 23. Murray, 28. Eight. Triple double for Jokic. Russ played well. This is uh, Russ going up against his former team. We get blown out in game three in Houston, which is kind of uh, alarming, but we do end up winning game number four by 13 points. Jokic with another triple double. And game number five, let's see, goes to the Denver Nuggets. We end up winning 125 87. Porter Jr. with 30. Jokic with 24, 16, 8, and 5 steals. And then you got Denver and Dallas here going up in round number two, something I thought we were going to see in the playoffs this past season. Uh, Dallas does have VJ Edgecombe starting at the two. Okay. They still have most of their bench. They have Malcolm Brogdon, but he has regressed a little bit. Game one goes to the MVP and Luka Doncic ended up beating by three. So who's going to get the most amount of triple doubles in this series? Game two goes to Dallas. They win by 11. Jokic has a 36-point triple-double, but Luka's 27-point triple-double was enough. Game number three goes to Dallas. Wow. So are we going to lose this year and then be swept in both our playoff series losses in this video? Yeah, we get swept by them. Okay. Um, I think we're going to make a move this offseason. I don't know if it's going to be moving Porter Jr. or Aaron Gordon, but I think I'm going to move one of them, and I think it's more likely going to be MPJ. And the Mavericks end up sweeping the Pacers. Oh my God. They went 16 and one. They lost one game against the Warriors, but they swept us, swept OKC and swept the seven seeded Pacers. So unfortunately I am going to lose out on Russell Westbrook. He did sign a two-year deal, but I over uh, rided his retirement last year. So I am going to lose him, which is a shame. Also Kevin Durant and DeMar DeRozan retiring, kind of shocking. They had, a, I think, a couple years left on their deals. Uh, Harden does go to the Hall of Fame. It's cool. It's kind of poetic. These three go to the Hall of Fame. All were drafted in the top five, one year apart from each other uh, by the Seattle Supersonics and Oklahoma City Thunder. We do 
do not own our first round pick this year, though. It's going to go to the Magic at 25, I believe, from the Aaron Gordon trade. All right, we're going to see if we can make a deal with the Memphis Grizzlies. They're looking to bring up the backcourt of Desmond Bain and John Morant. I would be sending them Michael Porter Jr. for Desmond Bain. Um, I would see if I can get the seventh overall pick in this draft. I feel like they're not going to agree to that. They do, I believe, also have pick. No, they don't. That's in the second round. So I don't know. I think I can get somebody else in this deal. I thought about Brooke Lopez and could flip him. I'd love to get Marcus Smart as well, but we can't take that on financially without having to throw in somebody else in this deal. Um, I can't move Wagner. Could I throw in Shake Milton in this deal? Would they do something like this? They'd want Aaron Gordon for Jock Wandale. All right, we may be a little bit off. I'd rather not move Noah Essengay. I would move Jamal Sheed in this deal as well. They would want Noah Essengay for Jock Wandale. Ugh. All right. I mean, I get it. getting Marcus Smart and Desmond Bain would be great. Um, I will throw in, I can't really do that. I'll throw in that second. All right, never mind. Uh, I think we're going to see if they'll do Desmond Bain and Brooke Lopez uh, for Michael Porter Jr. Let's see. Would they do this? Uh, they would want Noah Essengay. I would give you Jamal Sheed, and that is it. And Shake Milton as well. I'll throw you those two pieces. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, we'll swap seconds. Okay, Desmond Bain. You are a Denver Nugget. I mean, Jamal Murray has developed some defensive intangibles. Same with Desmond Bain right now. So we still have an, like, an opening at the three spot. And Brooke Lopez, I cannot move for 60 days. So that will probably be at the end of the offseason or at the beginning of the season. I'm going to look to move him. And the Thunder, who have been really good. And AJ Devanta, great. And the Rockets had Cameron Poozer. And the Spurs had Darren Peterson. All in the Western Conference. We got Randy Hendricks there in the second round. We're going to pick up the team option on all of these guys. We're going to extend Peyton Watson and Christian Brown most likely. We're actually going to make a trade with the Charlotte Hornets. We're going to send them Julian Strother, who did show some improvement last year, and Hunter Tyson for the lottery first round pick that they got from Terry Rozier and their top three protected pick in 2027. So we're going to re sign Christian Brown three years, 26 million. Peyton Watson three years, 40 million. We're going to sign Craig Porter Jr. to a one year deal. And Isaiah Joe is a free agent. I'm going to see if I can land him on a two year, $10 million contract. Thunder could no longer afford him, so they didn't guarantee his final year. All right, player progression. Jokic starting to regress. Murray starting to regress. We'll see if making these changes help this team this offseason, but I'm probably going to look to move Brooke Lopez at one point throughout the year with that expiring deal and maybe attach one of these younger guys with him. I'm also not going to play Brooke Lopez as well. I don't want to risk him getting injured and then I can't move him at the deadline. We'll see what DJ Widener can do. I'm going to play him over Craig Porter Jr. So the starting five is going to be Jamal Murray, Desmond Bain, Peyton Watson, Aaron Gordon, Jokic with Brown, Holmes, Joe, Essengay, and Wagner off the bench. We are four and a half star pace in space. Hopefully this team can come through in year number three. We start off the season with a massive win over the Suns. All right, so here at the trade deadline, we're doing great right now. Now I could trade everybody that I basically signed last offseason. We have a 4.6 point differential, which is actually fifth. Uh, which is a little scary. I mean, the Thunder have a five and they're only 28 and 23, which is interesting. The Mavericks are really good. So are the Rockets and the Blazers now with Cooper Flagg. Jokic has been phenomenal. Same with Jamal Murray. Desmond Bain has been great in this role. Basically what Porter Jr. failed to kind of do last year. Aaron Gordon, we're still going to rock with, even though he's kind of regressing a little bit. Craig Porter Jr. played in a pinch win. Jamal Murray missed about six games. Uh, I would look to move Christian Brown. I mean, Deron Holmes, I'd like for him to be a little bit better. <laughs> he's not been great this year. Isaiah Joe, is knocking down his threes. Watson and Essegay, I think I'm going to continue to play. All right, I'm going to look to make another trade with the Charlotte Hornets, a team that we uh, have a good relationship we made a deal with in the last offseason. We're going to be picking up Gary Trent Jr. and Corey Kispert in exchange for Brooke Lopez, Christian Brown, and their first round pick back. They are going to say no. They want Randy Hendricks in a second. They'll give us back Hunter Tyson. That's fine with me. And then we're going to make this other corresponding move. We are going to send out Deron Holmes, who was the Nuggets first round pick in the 24 draft. We're going to send out Isaiah Joe and that Heat Water first. We're going to get Pashik, uh Gumbo here, who is a recent first rounder. But I'm going to get year three, Devin Carter, to come off the bench for us in the playoffs and be the backup point guard. And I do need to make one more move. It's going to be Craig Porter Jr., who we signed, and Jay Sean Tate for a second, and Mo Wagner from the LA Clippers. And this is what the rotation is going to look like. It's it's really good. Murray, Carter, Bain, Gordon, Jokic with Kispert, Trent Jr., Watson, SNG, and Mo Wagner off the bench. Let's go win a title here in the 2027 season. And Luka goes back to back with MVP awards. Cameron Boozer, the third overall pick to the Houston Rockets, ends up getting rookie of the year. He's actually like such a stud playing in like Peach Jam and shit. No one our most improved and Luka clutch player of the year. All NBA first team does include Nikola Jokic. And all defensive second team includes Devin Carter, whose three point shot was abysmal this year, though, which is weird because he was an elite three-point shooter at Providence. And we finished as the one seed. We edged out the Dallas Mavericks by a game, finished with the best point differential in the West. Love that for us. We're fully healthy going into the playoffs. Devin Carter's a little banged up. 
but we're gonna be just fine, man. We got the depth on this team. I'm trying to figure out who I want to start for us in the playoffs. I think Gary Trent Jr. is not gonna start. I don't mind, I think, Corey Kispert starting at the three. As much as I like Noah Essenge, I don't think he's gonna play for us in the playoffs. We're gonna go in nine-man rotation. I think I'm gonna go 27 minutes to Devin Carter as a six-man. Let's do 20 to Gary Trent Jr., 20 to Peyton Watson, 37 to Jokic. We'll do 28 to Gordon. 28 to Kispert. Let's do 35 to Bain and at least 35 to Murray. And let's see how far this team can go. We're taking on the LA Lakers in the post LeBron era. They do have Scary Terry. They do have Rudy Gobert. They do have Jaden Hardy. Are we able to beat them and move on in the playoffs? We are up two to one. Gary Trent Jr. gets hurt and we end up winning in five. Jokic averaged a 25 point triple double. Murray averaged 23 and we advance. Let's go. So we're taking on the Portland Trailblazers who are a good team, but they just may be like one year away, but they do have Cooper Flagg, who's really good already. We beat him by 42 to start off round number two. They went, oh my God, are you kidding me? All right. So they are up three games to one. It's on, bro. We beat him by 42 and then lose by one, lose by 14, and lose by 13. Are we gonna lose in five? Yeah, all right. So for the third straight, oh my God, we lost two games by one point. I hate my life. Damn, that is a disappointing way to go out with this team. Oh man. Might have to think about moving Corey. I don't know. He was good in the playoffs. We'll see what I'm going to do with him. So you got the Portland Trailblazers and the Sacramento Kings in the conference finals. And you have the Pistons and the Philadelphia 76ers. And the Sixers and Blazers are in the finals. And the Blazers end up winning in seven with Scoot Henderson being your finals MVP. The team that beat us won it all. I feel like that's a couple times now in this video. Thunder legend DeAndre Jordan retires at age 38. I thought about not bringing back Mike Malone, but I'm gonna bring him back. It's nice to have the continuity with him under Jokic, or I should say Jokic under Malone. So we ended up drafting Brett Posey here with the 29th overall pick, a 6'9 wing. Alex, Alexi Bellemi goes number one, Bellamy, and then you have Don Ford ends up going number two. Uh, we are gonna pick up the team option on Devin Carter. There's Noah Essengay and DJ Wagner. I do point on making move this offseason I don't know if I'm gonna move Aaron Gordon it's just like who am I gonna replace with uh at the power forward spot because I don't know if like Peyton Watson's there yet and like would I just make a lateral trade I don't know I'm gonna look to bring in uh is it Goga Batatse maybe we bring you know could I bring back Deron Holmes actually on a two-year deal after trading him there we go so he's gonna replace Mo Wagner so Aaron Gordon regresses a little bit I just feel like this team can still go all the way all right we are gonna sacrifice some offense for some defense here at the deadline this is probably the biggest trade the Knicks and the Nuggets have made since the Carmelo Anthony deal at the 2011 trade deadline it's gonna be Desmond Bain Patrick Gumbo and Gary Trent Jr. in exchange for OG and Anobi at 30 years old and Dante DiVincenzo at 31. So I don't think Noah SNK is going to be on the team um, or in the rotation for the playoffs. This is what our team looks like right now as we are currently the one seed in the Western Conference. This better be our year. And here at the contract extension deadline, we're going to rip off some deals. Three-year deal for Corey Kispert, three-year deal for Devin Carter, four-year max contract to Nikola Jokic, a two-year $30 million deal to Aaron Gordon, and a new three-year deal to Jamal Murray. And right off the extension, Aaron Gordon breaks his left ankle. He's out two to four months. I love that. Nikola Jokic, severe left ankle sprain, six to eight weeks. Jamal Murray, why don't you get an injury as well? And Wemby gets his first MVP award. Don Ford is your rookie of the year, the second overall pick. You have Lee McNeely from UConn, six man of the year. Wemby, Depoy, most improved ace, Bailey in Cleveland, clutch player of the year, Fox in Sacramento. We get coach of the year. We go 59 and 23. Jokic is going to be out most likely all round one. Devin Carter was on all defensive second team. So having him and Ananobi out there on the perimeter is kind of filthy. And we're taking on the Memphis Grizzlies in round number one. They no longer have Michael Porter Jr. though. Obviously we had Desmond Bain for a little bit and then we sent him off to the New York Knicks. So we'll see if Jamal Murray can carry this team in the playoffs. Oh, nice. Actually, Murray, Jokic, and Watson are at least all going to miss game number one. Game number one, uh, Murray is actually going to be healthy for it, thank God. And so will Peyton Watson. And we do win without Jokic, which is nice. We do have Aaron Gordon fully healthy. Deron Holmes, two for 10 shooting. Hate to see that. We do end up losing game number two by six points. Come on, Jamal. I need you to carry this team through round number one. We do take a two to one lead. We win by 23. Just get me afloat or keep me afloat until Jokic is back. Game four goes to Memphis by one. Please do not lose game five. Jokic is back, thank God. And we do end up winning game five by 36 points. Jokic drops 44. Here we go, game number six. Boom, there we go. We win round number one. Peyton Watson drops 25. We are fully healthy right now. Taking on the Pelicans. Okay, that's a good team. They have Mikel Bridges. Are we able to beat the Pelicans? We did beat them, I believe, in round number one, back in year number one of this rebuild, and we do end up sweeping them. So here we are going up against Victor Wimbanyama, the MVP, the defensive player of the year this season. And you have the Knicks and the Magic on the other side. Game one goes to Denver. Game two to San Antonio. Game three to Denver. 
Um, as Dante DiVincenzo dislocates his right patella. He's out for the year. But we do end up winning game four without Dante. We ended up winning by five points. Jokic puts up 15, 21, and 14. Here we go. Game number five goes to Denver, and we are in the NBA Finals. Murray and Jokic get it done. We're going to be taking on the Orlando Magic, who already have a ring in this video. And can we beat the Orlando Magic? Here we go, man. The Aaron Gordon Bowl. Game one goes to Orlando. They ended up winning by seven. Rob Dillingham, they have now drops 25. Game two goes to Denver. All right, 39-point triple-double for Jokic. Game three goes to Denver. Boom, there we go, 114-83. Game four goes to Denver. We win by 20. Jokic with a 34-point triple-double. We do end up losing game five, okay, by seven. Please don't go to a game seven. Okay, we end up winning it all in six games. And Nikola Jokic, who averaged 28, 12, and 11, gets his second ring of his career. Man, I didn't know if I was going to be able to do it with this core. I did keep a decent amount of the OG Nuggets, including Jokic, Murray, Gordon, Watson, and technically Deron Holmes. I, I traded him and then brought him back. So we got five of them. And throughout the playoffs, Murray was great. Jokic was great. DiVincenzo was so good before he got hurt. But Devin Carter was a stud as well. So that is going to be for me. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, I'd appreciate it. If you drop a thumbs up, let me know in the comments which team you'd like to see me rebuild next. I love you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.